fantastic. He's amazing. He's magnificent. Let's just pray in our hearts. Give him the praise. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. There is no one like you, Father. No one like you. We do this for you and for you alone. And we thank you for who you are. Amen. Let this be in our more to say after something like that, but thank you. Thank you. The gift of your Holy Spirit alive in us. Our hearts are grateful. We bless you this morning. Won't you be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, band. Come on, let's give it up for them one more time. Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it is one of those, where do we go from here, right? <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Well, I'm so excited uh, to be going into uh, what I believe, uh, Vaughan and Dunks, you can join me on stage, is going to be an absolutely significant year for our church, City Hope Church. And I'm so excited, I'm so expectant about what God is already doing in this church, has already been doing, and is going to continue to do, right? And uh, as I've, I've mentioned before, vision uh, is such an important thing. Uh, the Bible actually tells us that without vision, people perish. Uh, some translations say they either cast off a, a restraint or even they run amok. <laughs> I mean, if you know, without vision, people run amok. And so it is so important uh, to hear from God and to speak vision in people's lives. And uh, that's what we do. So as a church, uh, we have a vision for our church, and so we don't come up with a new vision for our church every year. That would be silly. Uh, we ask God for a sense of His prophetic direction for the year ahead. In actual fact, the ESV in that proverb says a lack of prophetic vision causes people to cast off restraint. And so we ask God every single year towards the end of the year, the elders get together and ask God to give us a sense of his prophetic direction for the year. And uh, this year is no different. I'm going to grab a seat here. By the way, uh, if you've been around, you know, uh, we have a team of four here, uh, executive pastoral team of four. Uh, so the four is on stage, except it's the three, because James and Lara have had their baby. And uh, Omi is here in the front row, so first time granny over here in the front row, and so we're just so excited for them. Uh, I, I told James, I suppose it's all right, you can uh, miss this one, although they're probably online if they are. Huge congratulations uh, to the family, that's absolutely awesome. And um, so, you know, this is now the fourth year that we've done it. We implemented Vision Sunday uh, back in uh, the first one, uh, 2020, 2021, 22, this is now the fourth one. And it's, uh, it's actually awesome to look back. Uh, I took out the images from all the years as we've gone through them, uh, and I've actually had them framed, uh, because lest we forget what God does, you know? And I've looked through, and it's just significant what God does with these moments. Year one, hope bringers to Joburg, South Africa, and all of humanity. What a year that was. What a year that was. <laughs> uh, so much happened that year, and God used that in ways that we never could have dreamed it. God used us to bring hope to all of humanity in ways that we would have never imagined him doing that because we were all actually stuck at home online. But guess what? God used it. That was such a significant year because it eventually led, the theme of hope was so strong, it eventually led to us changing our name. Hope was not just a, a prophetic direction for that year. It was part of our identity as a church. That led us to change our name last year, year before last year now. And uh, then second year was, was pretty much an online year. You may not even recall. Uh, I think this one was so much online that uh, people, you know, it was the reflecting the, the 
hope of heaven and living it out as a house of hope on earth. That was uh, very significant for us as a church as well. And then last year, um, Cultivate, which I loved. How many people loved Cultivate? And I think we're going to continue with, that's not, so that's the thing, they're not done. <laughs> that's not like it comes to an end 31 Jan. God continues to work through it. And so cultivate and learning how to bring the hope of Jesus to our spaces, places, relationships. And uh, so we sat again towards the end of last year as elders, and we asked God to give us a sense of his prophetic direction for the year ahead. I'm really excited for this one. The theme that he has given us and uh, where I believe is going to really transform us as a church this year is the theme of his presence. His presence. There it is. And if you can read on the screen, it says, with Jesus, like Jesus, for Jesus. Do you like the symbol, by the way? This was hand-drawn, uh, these symbols of the dove and the, the eagle by an artist in our church, Dom, uh, who is so brilliant at, at helping us translate this, this sense of, of, of what we believe in into visuals like this. It's awesome. Uh, this greater than symbol over here uh, is speaking to the, the, the thinking the reality, the truth that God's presence is greater than everything else. Amen. God's presence is greater than everything else. It's above everything else. It's more important than anything else. And so we can throw ourselves at a lot of things as a church. We can put excellence into everything that we do, and we do that. But God's presence is greater than all of that, any of it. Without his presence, this is nothing. And so this is the year. Do you like this, by the way? His presence. And I think it's going to be so shaping for us as a church. Uh, and, and, and there's a couple of aspects. You know, we've already alluded to this much in the January series. I think we, we decided just to let that cat out the bag a little early this year. Because it's so important. And, and really, when you look at it, all of Scripture from the beginning to the end is very much about the fact that God's greatest desire is to dwell with His people His presence is that important to him, that right from Genesis, from creation, his presence was was with people. And right at the end of Scripture, when there will be a new heaven and a new earth, God's desire is still to dwell with his people. So everything about Scripture and everything about God is this, that his presence is within us, and his desire to be present within us is his ultimate priority. And so I just believe with Jesus, with we, we, we with Jesus in his presence, we become like Jesus in his presence, and it translates to us being for Jesus in his presence. Because having the presence of God dwelling in us is amazing and important, and one side of it that we need to look at, the implication that it has for us as a church, the implication that his presence has for all churches is that us as the people need to understand and learn and grow what it is to go deep in His presence because we're transformed in His presence. Amen? The other side of it is it's not all about us. It's not just about us and His presence in us, and that feels good to us. It has to be outward focused. It has to be mission, right? And so there's His presence in us, but there's His presence for the world. And we need to be a church that learns that. Uh, and I absolutely believe that when we learn that, when we grow and, and move forward in that, it's going to actually transform who we are as a church, what we look like as a church, and what God does in us as a church. So, super excited about it. I'm going to chat to uh, Duncan and Vaughn just a little bit about those two, two aspects of it. So, first of all, Dunks, um, and you've already spent time preaching so well into this this year. Um, but let's dive into a little bit of, of God's presence in us and going deeper in that. Yeah, I think uh, if, uh, if you have been tracking with us through January, um, We Are His Temple really looked at this idea of God's presence and just how God's presence changes everything. Um, and the amazing reality is you can see it in the picture of God's presence in a building, and yet the crazy truth of Christianity is that God's presence wants to be in you and in me. And so Jesus will be in us. And so when he is in us, then he is with us. It means we can grow in a relationship in intimacy with him. And that changes everything. It changes our heart, head, hands when we play it out. And uh, I was struck just even thinking about it, what that that with Jesus looks like. And it flows out into the like Jesus. Because if Jesus is in the equation, uh, uh, something's going to change and it's not him. Uh, It will be us. And so focusing in on that with and like 
uh, side of it. Uh, I was reminded, I had alluded to this actually in a short that we put out on uh, New Year's Day. And uh, it's still online, you can go watch it. Um, and it was looking at the end of Solomon's life. He had, he had written a book uh, that we ha- find in the Bible in the Old Testament called Ecclesiastes. And uh, even by secular standards and uh, secular scholars, uh, Solomon was known as one of the wisest men to ever live. Uh, His writings, his wisdom literature uh, is revered, not just in the church, not just in church circles, but even in secular circles. And uh, he, in the book of Ecclesiastes, really was trying to take a look at this idea of where do we find satisfaction? What is this actually for? Why does any of this matter? That was a question he was asking. Uh, And he goes through, and he was a guy who understood every pleasure that the world had. He knew what it meant to hold power. He was a powerful king over a powerful kingdom uh, with uh, a million servants at his beck and call. He knew every pleasure of life. He had a thousand women who he could call either wife or concubine. And so he knew every pleasure of the physical world. He was one of the richest men to ever live. And yet he had a heart that was for God and a heart that was with God. And as we heard last week, his dad, David, had actually enacted the, the start of the contribution for the temple, and he would be the one who actually carried on that construction and completed the temple. It was known as Solomon's temple. And so he committed great things for God. And as he's looking uh, at, to answer this question of, well, what's it all matter? What is it all for? He gets to the end of Ecclesiastes, in Ecclesiastes twelve thirteen, he says, this is the end of the matter. After everything has been said, after every experience I've had, after all that I I have experienced, after everything that could bring me satisfaction, this is my answer. This is my conclusion. Fear God, keep his commands, for that is the duty of all men. That's it. And when you think about that in, in, in the lens of his presence and his presence in us, which Solomon was literally creating a place that would house the presence of God. When you think of it through that lens and you take a look, you start to understand that it is the only thing that brings satisfaction. It is the only thing that can fill yours and my cup to the overflowing, to the point where we actually feel this is, this is it. This is what I was created for. Because when we're in that relationship, it changes everything. And he starts by with these two, the, the two sides of it, and he says, fear God. And I hope you've, you've seen, just as we've taken a look at these Old Testament images, that there is a fearing of God that we have to understand, that there is a fearing of God that we have to grasp. Because the actual, like when you get into uh, the, the, the original language and what was, what was meant in that word fear, it has two sides to it. It does have the side of genuine fear, that dread type of fear of something is bigger and I might be in trouble here. And we can't ever avoid that when we're talking about God, because God is big. Bigger than us, bigger than the universe. God could smite us in a moment. There has to be this idea that he is so big, so great. And yet the other side of it is there is this awe and reverence and respect and a holy drawing in into relationship. And it's a beautiful balance to hold because if you take the picture that we get in the New Testament where Jesus says, hey, we identify God as our father, there has to be, and dads will know this, you want your kids to have a fear and a reverence for you, but a fear and a reverence so that you're actually drawing them into relationship, into intimacy. And so there'll be the moment where mom says, just wait till your dad gets home and a kid should stress. But at the same time, dad gets home and goes, let's have a chat. Sit on my knee. Let's sort this out. There is a fear of the Lord that I think we need to dive into. If we're going to be with Jesus, if we're going to be with God, if we're going to be those carriers of his presence, we have to understand that true worshipers are worshiping in awe and reverence. They are fearing the Lord. But the other side to it is if that fear is in place, then amazingly it says, and keep his commands. And we know, we sang about it right now in the dove, none of it is by our own earning. None of it could be by our own power because if it was left up to us, we're not going to fear God. We're not going to choose God. We're not going to be able to walk in his ways. We're not going to even listen to the commands he might have. And yet the beautiful picture is when we have been with Jesus, when we are fearing him, he changes our heart. Um, There's a guy in our our city group, and and I love, 
I, I love conversations we have about this because he says the biggest mark for him in in knowing when he changed from being a non-Christian to a Christian, from being not with Jesus to with Jesus, was the moment that he realized everything he desired changed. Everything that he wanted changed. The, suddenly the things that I want today is not the things I wanted then. And that wasn't by his own uh, power. That wasn't by his own uh, might of his will or his own sort of uh, getting the rhythm right. It was only by God changing his heart. When God changes our heart when we're with Jesus, the amazing thing is we get to keep his commands, not under, uh, under religious duty, not under fear of punishment, but we get to keep his commands because our heart has now been aligned with him. And when our hearts aligned with his way, it means our ways are going to line up. And so we start to look like Jesus and we start to see this play out. And it is the, the full picture of worship. As humans, we struggle because we always look at the fruit, but we forget about the root. God says, hey, I want to change the root because if I change the root, the fruit will change. We get all messed up. They have, there's some bad fruit there. Yeah, but God's still working in the root. Just give them some time. And so it's going to be a beautiful picture for us as we, as we dive into what it looks like to be with Jesus, to be looking more like Jesus. And it then actually leads us into where it all matters that we can now be used for Jesus, um, which we're going to go into now. Yeah, so, so good. And that's exactly what links us into, you know, once we go into that deepening and starting to really look like Jesus in that, uh, what does that actually mean? What, how should that affect the world around us? So V, take us away. Let's chat about that. Yeah, so um, obviously what Duncan has said is so important. It's so important that we know Jesus because we want to be transformed. It's pointless to just know we're going to heaven and then we live the same as what we always have uh, while we're on earth. No, we want to be transformed because we want to be with him. We want to be like him. But it doesn't stop there. God has never stopped there. That, God's not done when we become more like Him. It's part of the process. But uh, God wants us to grow in depth in His presence, depth of knowing Him in His presence. But it's never stopped there for God. The big thing is that He wants us to stretch with His presence too. So He doesn't want us just to know a depth of presence. He wants us to stretch with His presence. Stretch where? Into the lives of other people with the good news of Jesus. He's wanting us to make him known. He's wanting us to, to uh, live our lives for him. Not just with Jesus and like Jesus, and it's all about us, but for Jesus. For Jesus, because we want him to um, be glorified, but we want other people to come to know um, Jesus. I'm not telling you something new today. Neither is Duncan really telling you anything new. But it feels like God this year is wanting us to, to grow us up in these things. Move us a little bit further down the road. Help us to take some more steps in terms of our relationship with God and in the life that we live for God. Because it's not now I just get a whole lot of stuff from Jesus and now I've got a wonderful life and I'm just blessed. No, it's to live life for Jesus. Because Jesus wants to use my life and he wants to use your life. And that's really exciting. And we see this uh, throughout Scripture. It's always been God's heart. You know, uh, the Bible is a revelation of God's heart. It's not just a book of words. It's a revelation of God's heart for you and for me. And we see His heart when we read the words of Scripture. I'm going to just read a couple of verses. Genesis 12, verse 2. The calling of Abraham, He says to Abraham, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. Kind of sounds like the dwelling. Knowing God. But God doesn't stop there. He says, I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. We've got to desire both. As a people of God, we've got to uh, desire blessing from God for ourselves personally, but oh, may it never stay with ourselves. May it stretch into the lives um, of other people. Mark 3, 13 and 14, Jesus says, when well, he goes up on a mountainside, uh, calls to him those he want, w wanted, and they come to him. And it says he appointed 12 that they might be with him. Again, the dwelling in his presence, the knowing in his presence. But again, he does not stop there. His heart is, and that he might send them out to preach, that he might send them out to tell others about who Jesus is, to tell others about the wonderful message of salvation that God sent his son so that we can know freedom in him and we can spend eternity uh, knowing him. John 17, verse 9, uh, Jesus prayed a couple of times in, 
in Scripture, this is one of his last times that he prayed. John 17 verse 9, it says, I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. Again, Jesus' heart is on us who know him already. But then it moves on in verse 20. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me, listen to this, through their message. You and I have a message. We've received the message of salvation, and we have a message to give. It's not our message. It's his message. But because we have a message to give, God is wanting us to take steps in this. Uh, not even steps. I feel like he was, he's wanting us to take strides in this this year. That this is not going to be a year all about me, Jesus. It's going to be about you, Jesus, because you love people, Jesus. Um, I had to ask myself this question, and again, the answer isn't rocket science. We know this. Um, but why has Jesus' plan been for his people to know him, to dwell with him, for him to dwell with his people, for us to know him deeply, but also for us, us to stretch into the lives of others with his presence? There's one reason. It's always been his plan. It's always been his agenda. It's because he wants to save people. It's the reason why many of us are sitting in this room today with a relationship with God. It's because he wanted to save us. He wanted to save us, and that is his plan. Sometimes we want so many answers from God. What do you want to do, God? What is your plan? But he's told us what the plan is. He wants to save people, and he wants to use you and me to communicate that message. You see, he's invited us into that plan. He's invited us into that plan, not so that we would just be recipients of salvation. Did you hear what I said? Not just so that we could be recipients of salvation going to heaven, but so that we can be mouthpieces and voice pieces of the message of salvation. That we can carry this message to others. That we can be for Jesus wherever we find ourselves on a daily basis. You see, we're going to, like we normally do every year, we're going to have initiatives this year. We'll uh, help people to understand how, we, how do we tell people about Jesus, how do we pass on this message. We'll have some evangelism opportunities. But I want to strongly encourage us. It's not good enough to know Jesus and wait for organized opportunities for evangelism. Organized opportunities are great, gives us an opportunity to learn, but because we know Jesus, we have to be ready to share this message every day. Why? Because God has placed us among people, and he hasn't done it randomly. He knows who you are, and he knows who they are. He knows that he wants to use you in their lives. Somehow, in this miracle uh, nature of God, because he wants to save people, he's placed you specifically in the neighborhood that you're staying in specifically in the workplace that you're staying in, specifically in the, in, in, in the place of study that you find yourself in. God has placed you there, and His desire is He's wanting to use you because He wants to save people. He wants to save people. So really my prayer for us as I think about His presence is that we would know Him. We don't want to be a people who, who don't know Him. He loves me. I don't want to be so, many, so busy telling other people about his love, and I don't experience his love myself. I want to know him. I want to experience his love, but I don't want it to stay with me. I want it to be able to reach into the lives of other people, and the only way that's going to happen is if we are a people who will stretch with his presence into other people's lives. John 3 verse 17 says this, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. What is this verse telling us? That those who believe will not be condemned. But it's also telling us that those who will not believe will be condemned. Romans 10 verse 14 tells us how people come to believe. Obviously, it's a work of God first and foremost. But it says then, how then can they call on the one that they have not believed in? 
How can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them, telling them about Jesus? How are people going to hear how they can believe? It's going to be through you and me. It's going to be through you and me, allowing the presence of God to change our lives, allowing the presence of God to take us into the lives of other people, to stretch us so that we can take Jesus to them so that they too can be saved. My prayer for us as a city, not just for 2023, is that we would be characterized. Characterized as a people who know God. But because we know, their God, we know our God, we will not be a people who are quiet about our God. That would be a, we would be a people who will be very verbal about our God. Because we know our God saves, we know our God loves, because He did it with us first, and He wants us to do the, the, the same thing in uh, the places where He has specifically placed us. And so may we embrace um, this year His presence in our personal lives. But may we take it global. Sounds a little bit corny. May we take it global to the ends of the earth. This message that we have experienced, this person in Jesus, God Himself in us, may we take Him global to the ends of the earth and local in Joburg. Hey Amen. I love that. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks. Can we give it up for Dunks and Vaughan this morning? I, um, Vaughan, you, you keep um, coining these cool phrases. I love that. Take it global. Vaughan actually coined uh, depth and stretch. I like that. It's a depth in his presence for stretch of his presence. I really love that. I honestly do believe, you see, what did I tell you about my wife? She's now got another baby in her arms, right here. She's, people are going to start thinking things. It's not ours, it's another baby. Beautiful. Ne uh, kids, next gen babies, it's just exploding. Depth and stretch. I, I honestly believe that this year, 2023, as we take this seriously, as God does this in us, as we, as we take it sincerely to, to go deeper into His presence for ourselves, to understand what that is, to live it out, His presence. I mean, it's a mind-blowing thing, and I think he's, he's, he's making us pause. I don't know how many of you come across conversations with people uh, who have, like all of us, gone through a, a drudgery of sorts through 2020 and 2021 and 2022 even, that are at a place of saying, but I want something else. There's, you know, I, I said it a couple of weeks ago when I preached, they're searching for Jesus. They're searching for the presence of Jesus. And, and I believe that God, a word that he's even given us today is, he's, is God has even given us the go ahead just to move forward past what we've all had to deal with, go through in the previous years. And as people are searching, I think the, the harvest is now riper than ever with people who are just saying, I just want what, and they don't even know that it's the presence of God that they want. They don't even know that that is available to them, but it is. And so if we take it seriously for ourselves, of actually saying, I'm deepening in my relationship with his presence, and I want to take that to those around me. I want to see people's lives transformed and changed and healed by Jesus around me. I can tell you that when we come back for Vision Sunday 2024, this church is going to look different, Amen. We will look like a different church when we take this sincerely, when we walk in obedience to know what God is saying to us in this. And uh, I, I'm just so excited about that. I'm so excited that we get to do this together. This is a we thing as well as a me thing. This is what Duncan was saying last week. But together as this collective, as City Hope Church, let's take this to heart. Let's go deep into His presence and let's stretch wide His presence to those around us. Amen. Amen. I'm so excited about it. And... Uh, the third thing, so there's the presence of God in us, there's the presence of God for the world. The third aspect of it, I suppose, and we've spoken about it uh, over the past couple of weeks as well, is uh, throughout all of time, God has always uh, created spaces and places for His presence. And so we are, are in a time where His presence lives within us. That's amazing. But He still creates spaces and places for His presence. For us to be together like this morning and for Jesus to minister to us the way that He has beautifully done this morning. A, a space and a place like what we have here at City Green where we have the opportunity to invite those into experiencing His presence. 
that we can invite people into this place and say, hey, come and experience the love and the redemption and the joy and the healing that is available in Jesus. Come and experience his presence. Come in. God has always done that, and he's still doing that. And so we have this incredible gift uh, of a space and a place for God's presence here at City Green. It's an unbelievable gift that he has given us, and, and we have not only the responsibility but the joy now of cultivating that into more and more of a place of his presence where I honestly believe that hundreds and thousands of people will come in, will experience his presence, and be changed by him. Amen. And so we're going to talk a little bit now more into the future of City Green. I'm so excited about it. I hope you are too. Put on your seatbelt. I'm going to ask you to have a look at the screen, and then we're going to go into that. This is City Green, eight hectares of land in Johannesburg North, situated along one of the busiest roads in Josie, Vitkorpen Road. This place is a gift from God, and it's not only our responsibility, but it is our joy to cultivate this place, to be a space that will bring the hope of Jesus to thousands of people's lives. The next step in the vision for City Green is to build our new 600-seater auditorium. This iconic auditorium is going to be built right here on what has served as our main parking lot for the last few years. This is home. Imagine what God could do. What you think? Yeah, come on. <laughs> How exciting is that, right? I think that last shot of that one time when it snowed at City Green and then that happened. <laughs> Just joking. It doesn't snow here, Americans. We don't get it. Sorry. But how beautiful is this? So this is what it's going to look like. That's the auditorium that we're speaking about, and so, so excited. By the way, I just wanted to take a, a second. Uh, two of our stars here at City, Nico and Chris, literally worked tirelessly through the night, even last night, to get this all together for us. Can we just thank them for their very hard work to get this together? And... Uh, just starting to really uh, dream and imagine what this could all look like. I want to take a, a little bit of a zoom out once again. If you were here last year, December, we chatted a bit about this. Uh, but uh, we have a dream for City Green. Uh, there's been a dream for this place, this property, uh, for many, many years. Uh, we get to continue to live that dream out. And it goes further than just what's currently here. It goes even further than the next step, which is that auditorium. Uh, but we have a dream for this place. The first part of the dream is that this place, City Green, would be a home for City Hope Church. Amen. Uh, that for me is so excited that this is our home. And as I look around this room, I can see many, many people who have found their home here. They've found their place here where God has done some miraculous things in their life because this is home. Amen. And so we want to continue to say this is home. This is the home for City Hope Church. And so as we continue to develop it, that's the first thing. The second thing, which I also think is so excited, all of these are, is that City Green is to be a base, to be a blessing and a resource to other churches and other ministries. How many of you know this is not all about us, right? I think it's a theme that comes in through today. It's not all about us. And if God has given us this incredible gift, it's a home to us. But it should also be a base that will be a blessing and a resource to the kingdom at large. How many other churches, how many other ministries out there are there that we could bless, that we could partner with, that we could say, hey, we can come alongside you with this incredible gift that God has given us. The third thing 
I love it. Is for City Green to be a hub of excellence that is of actual benefit to society around us. And so a hub, you know, people ask me and, and I say to them, the last thing we ever want to do is build a giant obtrusive monolith that is fenced in and no one ever has access to it except us. This has to be a benefit to society around us. This is, I think, this last year that we've just gone through the best that I've ever seen us do in terms of a church reaching its community. I could not believe how many, even you sitting in the room this morning, there's many of you who are literally from this community. And for a church to be based in a community that it is actually a blessing is the dream. And it should bless society around us. And so what could this place do for business or for education or for medical or for whatever beyond just us? And how could we be a blessing? And how could we in that way bring hope to people that we didn't even dream of before? So a hub of excellence. And we're going to do this with excellence as we always do for society around us. And then the last thing I guess most excitingly for me I would say is that City Green is a platform for the planting of new churches and new ministries. Amen. Imagine the joy that as we continue to develop this, as we continue to move forward with God has what God has for us here, that we'll get to the place one day where we say we're actually planting a new church now. What a joy that will be, that we'll be able to do that. So a platform for the planting of new churches and new ministries, because once again, it's not all just about us. Amen. And so that's it. Uh, part of the, the, the next step towards the dream is the construction of this auditorium right here. And so it's a 600 seater auditorium. We don't want to build a multiple thousand seater auditorium where suddenly we're lost in the crowd. Amen? Because one of the things that people say most about this church is that there is community, that people know me and that I know people. And that's one of the joys of this community. And we don't want to lose that. And so we're building a 600 seat auditorium. Uh, that we can go, we can start filling up that with multiple gatherings, and then we can get to a place of planting a new church from there. It will be a multi-purpose um, auditorium. And so once again, that it's not just all about us, but it's able to be used. Uh, we'd love to get to the place where we're able to rent this out for conferences and events and functions and weddings and who knows what else, but so that it's a blessing uh, to those around us. Uh, it's got multiple breakout rooms all over the place. Uh, one of the beautiful things working with these containers is uh, they actually create spaces within the building. And so uh, there's multiple rooms. There's a, a huge parents' lounge. Hello, all our parents. Let me tell you, we're exploding out of the parents' lounge uh, right now. And so huge parents' lounge. Uh, breaker rooms, small rooms all over the place are going to be created uh, within this design. A beautiful piazza area at the front where you're going to be coming in. Uh, the parking is on the other side of the river, and then you come into an open piazza area. Full ablution block with kitchen. Uh, uh, and the best part about all of this, the best part about us getting out of this building, moving into that building, is that it frees up this whole space, it frees up this entire building for the growth and the development and the expansion of our next-gen ministries. Amen, 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 amen. That's the best part. Because, hate to break it to you, but you and me, we're going to die one of these days. Some of us sooner than others, but still all of us. And there's a generation coming behind us. I, I have never seen, I'm so excited to, to be able to lead a church and be able to say one of the strongest things about our church is our next gen department. Our kids and our teens is an unbelievable dream come true. That is unbelievable. And so our next gen department is bursting at the seams. And so when we get ourselves out of here, and let me say, the quicker we get ourselves out of here, the better, because they can come and take over this whole space. And how awesome will that be for them? Amen. I'm excited about that. Uh, some of you have been around for long. Some of you are new. Uh, so there's a history to City Green. There's a history to this property. Uh, and it's worthwhile knowing just to know a little bit about, about it. Uh, this property, it's eight hectares of property, unbelievable, uh, was purchased by God First Church, as we were known uh, back then, in 2008. And so the, the ground was acquired and it was purchased and it was paid for entirely by the people of the church. Amen. And I'm looking at people right here in the front and I know there's many of us in the room who are part of that. We were part of that initial put in money. Into the, and so that was paid for. The land was paid for. It was owned by us in 2008. Uh, years went by, and as God first continued to, to grow and move forward, 
about the time 2018 came around, we had become God First City Church. Uh, we inherited this property. It's nothing like what you see today. Some of you will remember it uh, looked very different to what it looks like now. And so uh, we needed to develop this uh, part of the property that you're in now. This room, the offices, the kids' spaces, everything that you see had to be developed. That initial purchase of uh, the property was 13 million rand. Uh, and then developing this to what it is now, and eventually we moved on in 2018, that was 15 million rand. And another part of God's grace and God's story towards us is that 15 million rand to have what you see around us today was also entirely paid for and raised by the people of the church. How amazing is that? Yeah, that's worth it. Worth a clap. And so in all these years since we've had this property, there's never been debt here. There's never been a loan. It's, it's just been... The money has been raised by the people of the church. Uh, and, you know, God is a God that owns everything. Uh, Psalms tell us he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. It's all he's anyway. Isn't it the most amazing thing that he uses us? He uses you and me to say, well, what I need to do here, I'm going to use my people, right? My people who my presence is now in. And that's the beautiful thing about it. And so now moving into the next step, that's a little bit about the history and the construction of, of this uh, all the construction, so this requires, obviously, this is the first time we're going to be building something from scratch from the ground up uh, down there in the current parking lot. And so uh, we've got to do all the foundations, all the earthworks and everything to build the whole actual building, the exterior, all the interior. We've got to kit that whole thing out, all the tech that is required to run an auditorium like that, uh, and all this, the, the rooms attached to it and everything around it. Uh, we're going to need to raise a figure. Uh, some of you might want to hold on to your seat. Uh, we need to raise a figure and remember God's, God's already got it. But this is going uh, to cost 26 million rand for this. So some of you might need to pick yourself up off the floor. That's all right. No, no. Remember, it sounds like a big number, uh, but for what we will get for this, it's also not a big number. And serving God and seeing the journey that he's had us on and seeing the, the faithfulness of, of how God has worked with us on this property, it gives us confidence to be able to say, he'll do it again. Amen. He'll do it again. We know it. We've got faith that he will do it again, and he will use us to do it again. And so I'm so uh, excited about that. Uh, the age-old question of, well, how will we do that? Uh, how do you eat an elephant? Anyone? There we go. One bite at a time. And to be honest, that's been the story. Uh, right from the beginning, one bite at a time, or shall we say one step at a time. I don't know if the SPCA would appreciate our analogy of eating an elephant, you know, with all these animals running around, <laughs> but one bite at a time, one step at a time. And so what we do is break this down into packages, uh, and, and so the first package uh, that we'll be able to go and start doing is we'll, we're able to actually lay the found, most of the foundation work, lay the slab, uh, and this road that takes you around here actually needs to be pushed out, so that needs to be relocated. And that's package one. To let you know that through your giving and your faithfulness, we already have in excess of a million rand to start that phase now, immediately. How good is that? You can give yourselves a, a clap. That's already a step, amen? That's, that's a step that we're able to take. And that's what we do. We take one step at a time, one step at a time, and that is how God has, has worked with us. And so once we finish that first package, uh, in God's timing, we'll be able to start work on the next package. And it will all be uh, as impatient as we can be as humans sometime, and we want things done in our own time. And how many of you know there's nothing like God's timing? And, and we need to trust in that, that it's all in God's perfect time. And that's really the, the story of how it's, how, how it's gone, you know, having to, to hear from God um, through this whole process and then be obedient to that. That's been the story of, the, of, the, of this property and of this church. Uh, even coming into leadership of the church uh, at the end of 2019, uh, and for us going straight into the, the COVID years, <laughs> what a blessing that was. Uh, but you know what it did is it gave us the opportunity to say, well, well, the plan would have been that we were going to start construction with that in 2020, but we were able to stop and say, let's hear from God, let's be obedient to what God says, and then, and then walk in that. And that's exactly what we did. Now, I know of churches who did the same thing, prayed and heard from God, and God did tell them to build during COVID, and, and the building is now full. And so they were being obedient to God in that way. But that's not what God said to us. God said this is the opportunity He's given us to pause 
on it and wait for his perfect timing to start that. And I think that it is amazing at what he chose to do in us as a church in those years while we're waiting in obedience to start the next step of this journey. Amen. And so we've watched God's faithfulness over this property. I want to tell you this morning, maybe in a moment of vulnerability, that I or any of our leadership, we're not professional fundraisers, amen? I've never been a professional fundraiser. I don't know how to do that. I'm not a professional marketer. I'm not here to try uh, spin any PR. I don't know how to do that. That's not who we are. We're not professional fundraisers. But I'll tell you what we are, and I'll tell you certainly what I am in my life, is I'm a professional relier on God. Amen. Yes. I love it. I love that. Thank you for that whoop. Because you're identifying with me. In my own life, I am a professional relier on God. In our marriage and in our family, we're professional, trust me, professionals at it. (laughs) You know, you need to work a certain number of hours to be called a professional at something. I got those hours relying on God, not in my own strength. And that is the, the same for us as a church. And, and so we, we're not here to stand up today to try spin anything. We're not here to try twist anybody's arm. All we're standing here today to say is if anybody's going to move your heart towards the vision that God has for this place, it's God himself. That's not up to me. It's up to God to do. And that's exactly how we're doing it. It's, it's not our own ideas. It's not our own good ideas. It's all God's ideas. It, in fact, all of this preceded me. The, the vision to build this next step in, in the City Green story preceded me. That was already in the pipelines. I get to now live that out. And, and so you may not have been here for the years of purchasing this land. You may not have been here when we raised the money to move on to this land. We were there for both of those opportunities. We sowed into both of those opportunities. And it's only our greatest joy to sow now into the next step again. And maybe you hear this morning and it's the same story. You've done it. You've, you've sown and you've sown. And you've seen the fruits. You've seen the legacy of what God has done through that obedience and that faithfulness. But maybe you knew and you didn't have the opportunity to sow into this place. But you live in, in the fruit of it. And you're living in the blessing of it now. Well, I've got good news for you. You can now sow into the legacy. Amen. You can sow into what God is still going to do in this place. I want to tell you that when we're long and gone, this is God is still going to be doing incredible things here. I want to tell you that there's a generation of children rising up that are going to do better things and go further than we've ever gone because of our faithfulness just to be in obedience to what God wants to do here. And so if you're part of this church and if you consider yourself that this is your home and your family, we're asking you this morning to say, why don't you put up your hand? Why don't you say, I'm going to put my hand onto the plow, and I want to be part of the next step of this journey. I want to be part of the legacy of what God will still do for years and years and decades to come through this place. Amen. That is what we're, we're asking this morning. And I've said it uh, before when we had our Christmas gift day, that this is very much a, a, a we moment that we spoke about last week, that the amount that you give is actually not as important as the fact that we all participate in this together, that our hearts are in this together, that as a church, a City Hope Church, we're unified in following after what God has for us. And so when we ask you to give, I want to be just honest with you and transparent with you. We care less about the amount and much more about the fact that as a church, we're all participating in what God's doing together. Amen. And so that's, is that exciting for you this morning? I'm so pumped. I'm so pumped. And I just know, you know, the, the story, the story of this property has never been one of stress and anxiety and worry. The story has always been one of we'll take the next step when God tells us to, to, to take the next step. I mean, this, you know, I, I said 2008 is when we purchased this property. There are people in this room who weren't even born in 2008. We've never had to rush anything. We've always had to just say God's timing is perfect, and we just need to be obedient and take the next step. And that's what we're doing. And we, we believe that the next step is now. 
and uh, we're so excited about it. And I'm so pumped that I get to do it with amazing people like you who have just been such a blessing to me and to the leadership of this church. And uh, I, I can just imagine in my mind, I can visualize in my mind the day that we're able to, to be in that building, open up this building for next gen and uh, see all that God is going to do. Amen. Awesome, awesome. I'm going to ask uh, A, the band to join me on stage, please. And then hosts uh, are going to be coming around. Uh, and they've actually got uh, a card that they're going to hand out to you that looks like this. This is the new Pledge uh, City Green offering card. I'm going to ask you to take that. You can take one per couple or per family if you're going to pray about giving together. And as that comes around, I'm just going to ask you to grab it. Uh, you're going to also find within your envelope over there, uh, an armband that is a gift to you, and on the armband, it says, this is home. Amen? This is home. And I want you to take that and to remember that as you, as you pray to God about your involvement, about sewing into this project, that what we're building here is our home. And so please grab those and pass those around. And uh, what we're going to do is, uh, you'll see on this card, so just to, to remind you, uh, this is not a once-off special gift day that we're just asking for now like we did in uh, December for Christmas. This is for the whole year, all right? So we're not saying this is February's gift day and then we're going to have another one in March. This is uh, for the year 2023. Uh, and we'd really love for you to, to honestly go before God and prayerfully go before God and just ask God to speak to you uh, through His presence about what is it that He would have you sow into this next step of the building uh, what is it that he would have you give towards this? And there's some options there uh, to hopefully make things easier for you. The first option you can tick is some people prefer uh, to give monthly towards something like this. And so we actually still have people to this day, uh, since, since the old days, who actually give monthly into City Green. Uh, and some people find that a, a good way to give. And so if you'd like to do that, you can tick that off there. Uh, just a little reminder, give into something like this gift day to a building project. It's over and above our tithes and offerings, amen? Uh, we, we still need to operate as a church, so don't rob Peter to pay Paul or whatever the case is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, just remember that this is over and above. And so either a monthly amount. A second option there is I'd like to give a gift of X amount to be paid now. You can uh, choose that option. Or the third one, I would like to give a gift of X amount to be paid on the following date. And I know that some of you, there are times in the year which might be an easier time for you to give than others. Uh, and so you're welcome to do that. And just let us know I'm wanting to give and this is the date that I anticipate giving. And that will really help us plan. It will help us be able to plan how we move forward, what steps we're going to be able to take. Uh, and God willing, uh, we'll get there in the end and uh, in His perfect timing. Amen. 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 Listen, we're not even um, this morning asking you to hand this in today uh, because we, we actually want you to hear us honestly uh, in the spirit of not trying to twist anyone's arm, in the spirit of not trying to get caught up in a moment. We want you to take this and, and be prayerful about it with God. Maybe God is going to give you something to write down right now. That's absolutely fine. You can do that. Uh, there's actually a red post box in the coffee shop area there that you can pop it in if you do want to today. That's absolutely fine. Uh, but otherwise, I'm just going to ask you to go take it home and pray about it, pray about it as a family, uh, and bring it back with you next week. Uh, you'll see over the next few weeks, we're going to be uh, developing little areas around the place for City Green. Uh, we, there'll be constant information coming out about City Green. There'll be news, opportunities for you to hand in your cards, etc. And so you'll find that coming up over the next few weeks. Uh, but in the meantime, yeah, I'm not even asking you to return it right now in the moment because I really want you uh, to respond to this out of God speaking to you. Amen. Amen. Amen.